Hi, it's Ryan here, and today we're talking about is ballistic gelatin an accurate cutting medium or testing medium for blades? And the thing is, I have a piece here we made. No, we didn't make a large amount because we're not going to be shooting it today or doing any major testing with cutting. We're just going to look at the properties of it and see how it behaves compared to human flesh or, you know, that's what they try to simulate for the FBI or, or for ballistics to see how round expands as it goes through it. Well, under high velocity rounds, and ballistics are normally not even sharp, they're round bullets or hollow point bullets or whatever, it behaves accurately according to what they believe due to forensics and years of comparison. Now this here is 10% gelatin, which they also have NATO version, which is not the FBI standard, which is 20% for full mold jacketed rounds, which is totally different because of how dense it is. And uh, theoretically what we're talking about is the 10%, that's supposed to be the most accurate one that they would use, like let's say on Mythbusters or Deadliest Warrior for cutting with, with edges that they put on their cadavers. Their, and those are made by a special effects company, and I'm going to be honest, I can't find any information on whether they're totally accurate or not. They say that they're totally accurate reproductions, but they never go into statistics about bone density, organ density. You know, obviously that stuff's made out of uh, uh, latex, the organs. Uh, you know, the bone, whatever kind of plastic they use. So, no, we don't know for sure. Uh, the FBI still uses large blocks of their ballistic gelatin that they make themselves. So, let's get right around to talking about something. If I take an edge that's razor sharp, and I want to prove it's razor sharp before we continue, but it's going to cut all the way through paper, you know. Might have a niche or two in it, that was the only problem. But it's a fairly sharp blade. Let's say I hit myself with it. I'm sitting here nicking myself with it, but it's not nicking me. I'm not draw cutting. I'm just hitting, and I'm over a vein, so that's good. I'm not getting cut like I got cut the other day or something. Uh, but now let's say I do this ballistics gelatin. What happens if I hack it ballistic gelatin? We're not talking about draw cutting, we're just hacking. I just put a nice cut in this, and this is 10% ballistic gelatin, regular gelatin. But look at that, that was from a hack. You cannot do that with a human arm. I can hit just as hard and it's not going to, unless I screw up and draw, it's not going to go in. So to me, that shows that it's not accurate on cutting. It cuts much easier. And if you cut ballistic gelatin, always draw in one direction, but it should cut. Uh, see the drag? Are you guys watching the drag on this? The drag is ridiculous. The, the drag on the blade. The only thing that would slow you down is not cutting it, but blade drag. Which, I mean, that has nothing to do with... Uh, and plus it bounces. That's another property that's not really like flesh, I don't think. Unless maybe a big glob of fat would bounce. But let's say I hit it with my finger. I can sit here and try to put my finger through this. And it's bouncing. And it's bouncing. But I'm getting a little bit of fingernail indention. If I take ballistic gelatin and I do this, I cannot do this to somebody's body. That's not going to happen. And you can tear it in half. Easily. So if you're using real ballistic gelatin or FBI grade ballistic gelatin, let's say there was a wound channel here. I could slice it open and dissect it and see all the little bits of debris and all that kind of thing and examine my wound channel. Now, guys, if you get clear ballistics gel, which is a company that makes a synthetic, it's cut resistant. So I really don't think that would be very good for cutting either. They even tell you as one of the cons, it's very difficult to cut your wound channel open and examine it. Now, to show you a difference, something that people consider a good cutting medium, which is a lot like tatami, is wet newspaper. If I take it and I hack at it, I get a cut, but I mean, it doesn't cut that easily as the other. You get a little bit of a cut. You don't get the same kind of cut. But the idea is you have to draw cut this stuff to get a good cut. It's not a bad medium, really. See there, it didn't even cut, if you look what I'm trying to say. Hack a little harder, yeah, you get a cut. But we got it against the table, too. But just saying, this is a better medium, in my, my belief, because of the, the actual uh, fibers and cutting. And I know that muscle... And I know they say that represents soft tissue. This is for ballistics. Arrows possibly might open properly if they're expanding arrows, stuff like that. But that's basically what it is to check. Not really how much damage, so to speak, other than, you know, soft tissue-wise, not counting cloth, not counting flesh, you know, like the actual skin layers, then possibly. But uh, I, we're thinking about using this. If anybody has any better suggestions, let us know. This is cheap, easy. It's recycling newspaper for some of our edge tests. We've got blades coming in the mail. Uh, from Medieval Shop. Thank you, Medieval Shop, again. Uh, lots of stuff for us to test. But I really don't think making this and putting stuff in it to simulate bone like I was thinking of. Like this is a plastic type of dowel here. 
that we thought might simulate bone, which I think it still might simulate bone pretty accurately. Let's see how easy it broke after I cut it. It doesn't break easy with the coating on the outside though. But as you know, this is a bone, and I try to hack it, and it hacks into it as well. It's harder because it's dried out. But we got a good hack. Like, See what I'm saying? I can hack into bone, but it kind of splinters. It's, it's harder. That's a beef bone though. But we did try to reconstitute it and wet it. But I mean, different materials might work for bone, you know? This is a, a piece of wood. It's like a, a cedar type wood, and I wet it. That seemed very bone-like to me, the way it cut. Very similar if you look at the bone and what we were not the plastic with the bone. So, but anyway, that's all I was trying to say. I don't think it's an accurate cutting medium. You don't have to actually, if you have a struggle, if you have a 20%, it's going to be a lot more resistant than not go as deep when I hack it. But what I'm trying to say is for cutting, I don't think it's, it's not cutting like, like you would expect is what I'm trying to say. It's just really easy to, I'm just chopping it, you know, I'm just hacking at this stuff and it's cutting easily. And this is ballistic gelatin that's 10% grade, not 20% grade. 20% grade. All the differences, just so you know real quick, I'll let me explain this. They shoot it with a 1.77 millimeter pellet gun. And I think it's like 197, don't, don't quote me on this if I'm wrong, 197 to 200 something feet per second, 202 feet per second or something. And the round will go in uh, eight and a half centimeters. And that's not a round, that's a pellet gun. Okay, that's how they test it so they don't destroy their large block when they test it. And if you heard something about them putting, the stuff does go bad and smell bad after a while. This is not bad. It's been cured properly. And everything. But if they set it in a, um, let's say they set it in a uh, uh, storage area, they'll sometimes put, not clove oil, somebody told me clove oil, but it's cinnamon oil. They'll put it in there to help stop it from smelling bad as it starts to age or go bad or after shooting, because I, I hear it smells really terrible when you shoot it as well. But for ballistics, we may make some of this. We'll make some large blocks. We'll use it for testing some firearms, or we test some firearms in the future, even old firearms. But uh, for swords, I really don't see the point. I mean, this would just be something to hold some bone material in. And every time we've ever cut any kind of flesh, in a lot of our videos we've done this, we've cut meat. Well, I'll bring like an Oryx neck in one of them. Uh, we've used ho roast hogs and stuff. We make sure our blades are clean. They do not have any silicone on them, like a silicate oil, like a WD-40 or a Triflow, or Triflon that has a Teflon, because that stuff can be poisonous when you eat it. When we do our videos with meat, we eat the meat. That's what I'll let you all guys know. We don't waste anything. If we, if we bought a whole hog, I'd, what I'd have to do is butcher it up after I used it for cutting and put it in the, put it in the uh, deep freeze if I had room. I'd have to have room. So something like that's not a really practical thing for us to be doing. That's all I was trying to say for us to be, you know, having a large, you know, animal every time for us to try blades on or something and go, wow, look how well that did. And that's totally accurate. You know, this was a hog, a pig. It's the closest thing to human flesh. It's not something we can do for y'all. I mean, we could do a roast occasionally to shoot an arrow in a big, large one if we can get a hold of it or something, but we do eat it. We recycle everything. We don't waste anything. That's why you see a lot of junk around. Thran loves, uh, you know, recycling anything, making anything turn into something valuable. I mean, that's just the whole beauty of reality. Yeah. But just saying, uh, oh, I want to bring up our uh, katana. Try to sit this thing in here to set it out of the way. Out of my way. Our new katana, which somebody asked about our old one, and I had said something uh, about it being 440 stainless. We found out that's not true. It's rusty. This is not our old one. This is our new one. This is a Musashi. If you all want to get a good look at it, I know we're doing this at night. But it's kind of unusual for us. We just decided to do it. But Hold it out over the table. Oh, yeah. It's a nice blade. That's what I was trying to explain. And it is razor sharp. And something like this would be nothing for it to cut. It would just... But the drag. See the drag I'm talking about? Flesh does not drag. Immediately carpillaries, blood vessels, everything would be cut. But look at this. There's tremendous drag. If you had a whole body like a torso, I could see how you wouldn't cut very deep because you'd have so much drag against the stuff that, I mean, it's, it's like it catches it. The flesh doesn't catch blades like that. I'm sorry, but it's just not something that takes place. And I don't even have to, I don't even have to, not to reiterate it, but have to do anything. I don't have to do anything but hack, and it's going to go clean through. So just saying, that's not... Uh, you know what I'm trying to say, that's not uh, a medium that I consider flesh. I know you could do that with a cleaver and meat, but I'm just saying, it's just too easy. If you see what I'm saying, it's, it's, even though flesh is easy, I'm just saying, other than the drag, when you get a large piece, we're going to have lots of drag. I just don't see it as a cutting medium. I think we had fun with it today. Oh, and the other thing, let's say a, a fresh piece. Could I walk up to my friend's arm and do this number? I don't think so. I just don't think that I can do that. If I could, I don't think I'd have problems fighting. I'd be a god. I know that much. I'd be just like, ah, ripping hearts out and stuff. 
But anyway, that's all I was trying to say is talk to you all about everything and uh, show our blade. This is a Fusashi. I looked it up online. The model, I can't remember the exact model. I'll link it if I can in the description and a link to it. But I got it because somebody wrapped it incorrectly. And you can see the, the uh, skin here is actual real skin and wood, which I could see that. And I got this, believe it or not, from a pawn shop. And the guy there honestly thought this was a junk blade because he looked at this. He saw the pins. Oh, these pins are, you know, oh, they're wood. That's silly. Oh, it's not supposed to be wood. Oh, that, that, that looks cheesy there. It looks all, you know, that's what he honestly thought. He thought it was a cheap sword. I'm going to be honest. We got this thing a while back. I got it for around, what was it, 60 bucks? It's actually worth much more than that because I looked and it was around 200 and something dollars, which retail, at most retail shops, would go around about three, three something, four hundred dollars. And it's good for cutting tatami. Very, very nice. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say to everybody. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's a very nice edge and I know this isn't a large piece of Tommy it would be about that big normally you know I mean because it's about two about two thirds to what the actual size would be so I don't want to be mad about that big it wouldn't be like a large but I also have the wet wood I said that I thought made a pretty good bone substitute in the middle so honestly I think this is a very nice blade I don't want to get too crazy at night because we're having to film really close with a with an actual uh, light, and I don't want to accidentally hit Elvin Rose. I've had enough accidents already by just bad luck and heat and stuff. Anyway, see you all later.